Hello friends, it's a pleasure for me to join the International Hybrid Summit conducted by the uh, Bangladesh BSMMU. I'm going to talk about the echocardiographic evaluation of different forms of ventricular septal defect. I'm going to divide this session into three, ses three parts. The first part will be to understand the normal intraventricular septum. The second part will be to understand the different forms of VSD for a device closure. And third session will be, since perimembranous VSD is the commonest form, a detailed analysis of perimembranous VSD. So what are the conventional two-dimensional echo appearances of an intraventricular septum? What are the parts of an intraventricular septum? How do we correlate echo images to the morphological heart specimen? I'm going to show morphological heart specimens as well as echo images and show the correlations. Conventionally, echocardiographic imaging is done by three different views. We have subcostal view, we have apical view, and we have parasternal view. So we approach the heart in three different views and we look at the interventricular septum. In a subsified view, we have the membranous septum identified where the anterior tricuspid leaflet meets the septal tricuspid leaflet and it is immediately below the aortic annulus. And this portion is the membranous septum. When you look at it in a parasternal short axis view, it is around 9 to 10 o'clock position of the left ventricular outflow tract close to the septal tricuspid leaflet. When you look at it from a morphological specimen, the inlet septum is formed by the portion of the septum which is bounded superiorly by the septal tricuspid leaflet annulus and inferiorly by the septal tricuspid leaflet caudal attachment. The outlet septum is formed by the trabeculo septum marginalis, the superior extent. So above this is the outlet septum. So perimembranous septum is located between the outlet septum and the inlet septum in a small corner close to the anteroseptal commission. So if I have to draw like a cartoon, it is located in the apex of the triangle of cock and is between the inlet septum and the outlet septum. So we wrote a paper on unfast reconstruction of ventricular septal defect by 3D echocardiography. I'll show how a 3D echocardiography looks like. So this is the 3D echo inlet septum the trabecular septum, outlet septum, and this is the membranous septum. So the portion that is shown by the arrow is the membranous septum. The portion where the septal tricuspid leaflet cardae is inserted, that is the lower margin of the inlet septum. And the, where the trabeculo septum marginalis ends, this is the portion of the outlet septum. You can see the trabeculo septum marginalis is drawn on the cartoon as well as shown on the echocardiogram, on the morphology specimen. So the portion that is seen between the entire, behind the entire septal tricuspid leaflet is the inlet septum. So this is on a subsequent short axis view. The whole length is the inlet septum. If I have to look at it from an epical four chamber view, it is beneath the septal tricuspid leaflet. This portion is the inlet septum. And on a three dimensional view, what is shown by the arrow is the inlet septum. It is guarded superiorly by the STL annulus and inferiorly by the STL caudal attachments. So this is on the cartoon and this is on the morphology specimen. In subsequent short axis view, as you sweep towards the apex of the heart, the entire portion is the muscular septum. There is a round bridge of structure that is the septal band and which gives off an echogenic structure that goes to the right ventricular free wall, that is the moderator band. So the septal band and moderator bands are features of the trabecular muscular septum. In the epical four chamber view, the portion that is below the inlet septum up to the apex, the whole area is the muscular septum. So since it is a very vast area, we can subdivide them. The portion that is occupied by the middle of the muscular septum is called the mid-muscular septum. Now, if you see it on a short axis, in short axis, it can be divided as anterior muscular septum, mid-muscular septum, posterior muscular septum. This is parasternal short axis divided into anterior, mid, and posterior muscular septum. 
the same if suppose if you sweep towards the apex then it becomes the apical muscular septum so if i have to show here this is the muscular septum this is the this is the septum marginal trabeculae with its posterior division and anterior division this whole triangle is muscular septum and whatever is anterior is anterior muscular septum posterior muscular septum apical muscular septum and mid muscular septum so we now we identify which is the muscular septum now we go on to the outlet septum outlet septum is above the trabeculo septum marginalis so the portion on septal tri on a uh, subsified short axis view above the septal band below the pulmonary valve is the outlet septum on a parasternal long axis view the portion that is immediately beneath the aortic valve is the outlet septum this is the commonest form of ventricular septal defect in the oriental population i'm sure bangladesh also has got a slightly higher incidence of subpulmonic vsd so most of the subpulmonic and outlet vsds will be seen in parasternal long axis view immediately below the aortic valve in this location when you look at it on a short axis view between 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock whatever is anterior to the left ventricular outflow tract this area is the outlet septum so here you see the pulmonary valve so immediately below the pulmonary valve will be the subpulmonic vsd and this is the whole of the outlet septum so this is the summary the outlet septum is formed by the septum that is above the septal band inlet septum is the septum that is beneath the stl cord a so with this background and this 3d anatomy we proceed on to the remaining parts of the talk so having understood the ventricular septum now let us see different examples of simple ventricular septal defects the commonest form of ventricular septal defect is perimembranous vsd which is defined as the vsd that is located in the membranous septum where it is closely related to the anteroseptal tricuspid commission so this is the anterior septal leaf anterior tricuspid leaflet the septum when you sweep from four chamber to five chamber at the junction of four chamber to five chamber you look at the perimembranous vsd so this is the perimembranous vsd when you go from the four chamber and anteriorly sweep to get the five chamber view in a parasternal short axis view it is located between 9 to 10 o'clock position so this is the left ventricular outflow tract it is immediately above the tri tricuspid septal tricuspid leaf this is on a three dimensional on fast view you see the tricuspid leaflet and the where the septal tricuspid leaflet ends anteriorly in that area is the membranous septum and this defect is the perimembranous ventricular septal defect now coming to outlet septal defect in a subsified short axis view the ventricular septal defect that is located immediately below the pulmonary valve is the outlet vsd and so this is the outlet vsd a large outlet vsd when you look at it in a parasternal long axis view it is located below the aortic valve so whatever is seen on a parasternal long axis view below the aortic valve is a yeah, outlet vsd so this is a large outlet vsd with a cartoon example of an outlet vsd which is located immediately below the pulmonary valve this is the color flow doppler of a parasternal long axis view immediately below the aortic valve you can see the large vsd and the same cartoon example and this is the three dimensional on fast view you can see the inlet septum is intact the muscular septum is intact the membranous septum is intact a large subpulmonic outlet vsd which is located both below the aortic valve and pulmonary valve so this is also called as doubly committed vsd large doubly committed vsd so this is the cartoon you can see the the large outlet septum and this vsd is occupying the entire outlet septum in sometimes a high muscular vsd may be mistaken for a perimembranous vsd if you carefully look at this vsd this vsd is visualized when you sweep from perimembrane when a four chamber view to five chamber view and here you are exposing the ventricular septal defect but it is separated from the aortic valve by a large muscular margin it is also separated from the membranous septum with a muscular margin so when you look at it on a typical four chamber view you can appreciate a large muscular margin so this is not a 
a perimembranous VSD, but a basal muscular VSD or a high muscular VSD. These are ones that are amenable for device closures. So when you look at it on a parasternal long axis view, you can see a good separation between the ventricular septal defect to the aortic valve by a long muscular septum. So this is a high muscular or a basal muscular VSD, which is also seen well on a color flow here on a parasternal long axis view. This is the morphological specimen of a high muscular VSD. Now this morphological specimen, we can see it on a three-dimensional echocardiography. This is the 3D echocardiography of the left ventricle in its, its basal part superiorly, apex inferiorly. You are able to appreciate the high muscular ventricular septal defect. It is separated from the aortic valve. These are examples of multiple VSDs. This is an anterior muscular VSD and a posterior muscular VSD. This is seen on a parasternal short axis view. So this anterior muscular VSD is smaller, the posterior muscular VSD is larger. And when you look at it on a 3D ANFAS view, the anterior muscular VSD and a posterior muscular VSD, I've drawn a cartoon here to explain the same thing. So this is the muscular whole of the ventricular septum anterior and posterior muscular ventricular septal defect. This is a subsified view of a large mid-muscular VSD. Mid-muscular VSD is located in the mid portion of the trabecular septum. You can appreciate the septal band here. So it is inferior and posterior to the septal band. So this is the large muscular VSD. The same VSD can be seen in other views. This is subsified coronal view. You can appreciate the right ventricle here, left ventricle here with a large mid-muscular ventricular septal defect. When you look at it on an apical four-chamber view, a large mid-muscular ventricular septal defect. And when you look at it on a parasternal short axis view, this is the whole of the left ventricle, the circular left ventricle with a large mid-muscular VSD. Here we have to appreciate that during systole, these muscular VSDs will be smaller. During diastole, it will be larger. And this is the three-dimensional on fast view of the mid-muscular VSD. And the VSD is located very clearly here. Sometimes VSDs can be multiple. This is a perimembranous VSD, mid-muscular VSD, and apical muscular VSD. All the three VSDs are seen here. This is a perimembranous, mid-muscular, and apical muscular VSD. Again, this can be appreciated on three-dimensional on fast view. I have drawn the cartoon here. This is the example on the, on the specimen. It's a perimembranous VSD, and these are the muscular VSDs. And we can see multiple VSDs here, mid-muscular, apical muscular, and perimembranous VSD. The last form of VSD is the inlet VSD, which is also called as AV canal VSD. You can appreciate between the AV valve and annuli is the inlet ventricular septal defect drawn in this cartoon in a blue color. And the same thing is seen on a three-dimensional echocardiography. This is the inlet ventricular septal defect. Having seen the different forms of ventricular septal defect, the last part will be perimembranous VSD, which is the commonest form of VSD. So perimembranous VSD can be classified as type A when there is no aortic margin, type B when there is a muscular aortic margin, type C when it forms a membranous septal aneurysm, and type 4, where the septal aneurysm is formed by the septal tricuspid leaflet itself. Here, the septal tricuspid leaflet is not forming the aneurysm. Here, the tricuspid leaflet is forming the aneurysm. So here is an example of a perimembranous ventricular septal defect with no aortic margin. This is a subsified view. We can appreciate that there is no aortic margin at all. And when you look at it from a subsified coronal view, you can appreciate the aortic valve leaflets. And immediately below that is the perimembranous VSD. When visualized from parasternal view, we can appreciate that there is no aortic margin at all. Such an VSD is called as type A ventricular septal defect. So this is the 3D cartoon view of a type A VSD where there is no aortic margin. These VSDs we have to carefully place the device because aortic valve leaflets can be touching the devices. It is seen well on a apical five chamber view where the ventricular septal defect is close, very, very, very close to the aortic valve leaflets. Here you can see the aortic valve leaflets almost touching the superior edge of the VSD. That is independent of tricuspid valve leaflets. We can appreciate the septal aneurysm here but it is not contributed by the septal tricuspid leaflet. 
on an apical four chamber color view we can see the color flow through the perimembranous vsd now when we carefully observe this septal aneurysm and the septal tricuspid leaflet we can appreciate that they two are independent of each other the septal leaflet is not forming this aneurysm it is formed by an ingrowth of tissue from the edges of the vsd such a vsd is called as type c vsd but the last type called the type d vsd is where the vsd itself the septal aneurysm itself is formed by the septal tricuspid leaflet so this is the stl and the stl gets attached to the crest of the ventricular septal so this is forming the septal aneurysm the the aneurysm is formed by the stl itself we can appreciate it better here when you can see that the septal tricuspid leaflet is forming the aneurysm and this is the the epical four chamber view where the septal tricuspid leaflet is forming the aneurysm so this last type is called as type d ventricular septal defect so thank you for your attention what what we have dealt with so far is the different echocardiographic recognition of different forms of simple uh, vsds with more emphasis on perimembranous vsds thank you very much for your thank you sir dr shiva kumar for your excellent delivery